I am Angela Garbo, CCB, and next to me is Anne Storm, Associate Director for CTE at the ICCB. So we're going to talk about grading funding and utilizing Perkins Five Funds to support ICAPS. So um, we're going to do a grade funding overview, Perkins and use of funds, adult ed uses of funds, and then a what's allowable activity. So we'll jump into this. Let me. Uh, I didn't hit graded funding. Um, basically, it's financial assistance from several sources is coordinated by those funds to support a single initiative strategy. Uh, while each award maintains its award specific activity. Basically, how can you put money together, still meet each of those requirements from each of the sources, but how can you put the sources, the, the funding together to make it stretch farther and go further? So that's a general definition of rated funding. Next slide, please. This is you. This is me. Okay. So before we begin our discussion on braided funding, we're going to have a quick overview of Perkins. Um, Perkins is the Strengthening Career and Technical Education. Oh, we're breaking up. For the 21st Century Act, also known as Perkins Farm, which is how we will refer to it in this presentation. Um, Perkins is a federal education program and it invests in secondary, post-secondary, and adult and career technical education or CTE programs. And it is the legislation that guides and also funds CTE. So we can use, you can use your Perkins uh, money to support uh, several activities um, at your institutions. Uh, you're working on programs of study, so you're, you're putting money there. Um, you can use that for professional development for your instructors. Um, you can use it to offer technical assistance. Um, you can use it for career exploration, guidance, and advisement, and also data collection and analysis, and program and plan evaluation and monitoring. Next, next slide. So um, with Perkins 5, um, you are given uh, kind of a little bit more flexibility when it comes to supporting your students, especially your special populations. So some of the most common allowable uses of your federal Perkins funds, we want to make that make that clear that with Perkins, we're talking about federal right now. Um, you can pay for um, instructional supplies, materials, and equipment for your CTE programs. You can always cover professional development for your CTE staff and instructors. You can pay for industry recognized certification exams or assessments for your students. You can use the money to fund excursions or extended learning opportunities as well as related to you know, your CTE. CTE coursework. Um, I think a lot of colleges use the money for field trips, uh, industry site visits, things like that. And you can also support um, to reduce or eliminate out of pocket expenses for your special population students. So we're thinking of things like transportation assistance, maybe you buy gas cards, um, you offer childcare assistance, you have a lending library where students. And, uh, borrow things like textbooks or uniforms or even maybe certain tools for a program. Um, and um, yeah, that's it. There you go. Next. Got ahead myself. Uh, so your special population students are um, who we're targeting when we uh, offer this type of uh, support. And special population students um, fall into several categories. We have individuals with disabilities. Uh, individuals from economically disadvantaged families, including low income adults. We have individuals preparing for non traditional fields. We have single parents, including single pregnant women, out of workforce individuals, English learners, homeless individuals, youth who are in or have aged out of the foster care system, and finally, youth with a parent is a member of the armed forces or is on active duty. I want to jump in real quick and say many of these special populations are on the CTE side are identical to the special populations on the adult ed side. So this is not, I mean, we're not talking about two different lists. They are very much the same. Okay, that's next slide. slide. Okay, so, coming, so before we get into this, there was a question in the chat. And I'm going to go back and open the chat up. 
So can Perkins Farm be used for student seating for the PC exams and the HET? I think that's what helped get the EPA certification test. Mm -hmm. I think where um, sometimes uh, some confusion is um, you need to pay for those upfront um, instead of reimbursing the student for the cost of the exam. But yes, you can use it to cover um, exam costs for your students. Do they have to? Um, do, does the exam have to be part of the class? A part of the program. Part of the, it is part. Of, it has to be part of the program in order to pay for it, or is it built that way? I just I'm not familiar enough with I programs to study. It depends on well, it should be built okay. in that way. That's going to depend on the institution. Sorry, we're, we really are sitting right next to each other, so we really are right. having a conversation about this. Okay, so the allowable uses of adult ed. State funds. Did we? We did have another question. Hold on, chat. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, there you go. That was easy. So, for the Perkins side, remember, Anne talked about using federal dollars. On the adult ed side, you can only use state dollars for ICAPS things. And you can use it for training tuition. So, tuition for the classes that they're in. Wraparound services, including transportation and child care, lending libraries, very similar to what Ann talked about, wireless hotspots, laptops. But again, lending libraries, these pieces come back mm -hmm. to the program, not staying with the student. Right. Um, institution, instructional and support on the adult ed courses, all of that is covered through um, adult ed state funds and then uniform equipment that does not become property of the student. Again, it goes back to that. Lending library piece that as long as the students don't spend it, you could lend it out. Um, and I know sometimes the question is really you're going to collect back. Well, if that's the case, yes, it can be washed, washed yes. sanitized, mm -hmm. and reused. So, yes. All right. So those are common allowable uses for the adult ed side of things. Next slide, please. Um, so now we're going to get into our what's allowable activity. So there's a jam board link right here. So hopefully, one of our customers look at that. Brittany's all over it. You put the link in the chat. So if you click on that, it should take you to. Um, yes, I know I'm fading. As I made the comment earlier, it's my battery, it's running low. And only old people will understand that comment. Um, and I'll let you work your laptop. How do we get to that Jamboard link? So when you go into the Jamboard link, you should pull up a page. Look at that. There's scenario one at the top. Um, over on the left side of the screen, the fourth icon down, if you hover over it, is a sticky note. If you click on that, you can pick whatever color sticky note you want. Totally. Are you able to see it on the screen, or are you only seeing the PowerPoint? I do not see it on the shared screen. Okay, let me get it so you can see it on the shared screen so we can give them instruction that way. Okay, sorry. I just no, you're fine. I just wanted to make sure that everybody could see it. I was like doing things and I'm like, so yes. Okay. Me. There you go. Keep Now keep going, Angela. Thank you. Okay, how do I get back to where I was? I don't think that you need to because okay. everything are things right there. So the fourth, okay. But we need to be into it to move them around. Um, Ah, here we go. So pick whatever screen color you want. I think I have pink. And so when you pick that, then you're going to type in. So if you read the scenario, it says adult instructor Mr. Smith and CT instructor Mrs. Buxton teach together in the world of ICAPS program at Gerberding Academy. Recently, Mr. Smith and Mrs. Buxton have discussed program needs for the upcoming fifth grade. Priority needs they would like to request funding for include. Attending a national welding conference for professional development, providing a stipend to Mr. Smith to cover additional work for the support class, purchase new textbooks and welding class for the lending library to ensure that students can access materials for the welding class, providing tuition waivers to students in need, providing gas cards to students to help with transportation costs associated with attending Mrs. Thompson's class. How can the team teachers use funds to meet their priority needs? So, if you go on the left side, down to the four level, to the sticky note, Pick whatever color you want. Type in on the screen. Um, should be able to click the sticky note. Okay. 
How did that not work? You should be able to click it, click the note, and type into it. Now tokens are okay. Person. Um, to is okay. When you then you can save, it shows up on the screen. So there's my yellow one. So imagine a line down the middle of the page. What goes on the adult ed side? What goes on the CT side? What what kind of funds are allowable on each of those sides? And once we see these columns slow down, we'll start working through. Hey, somebody said I'm amazing. Oh, that gets my CT. Thanks. <laughs> and this is not becoming an Angela's amazing competition. What is Angela? It is the Angela show. So there's five blank post-it notes. Um, I think some of them are on the Quran. Yeah, it's somebody just able to type on the post-it yeah. when you have the box out. Right. When you open the box, it should. Oh, I'll do it again. Like when you, when you click the post-it, it gives you something. I'm the one who wrote that. The and this time, the yeah. end is amazing. <laughs> I'm going to tell my kids that when I go home, Amy. I don't know where it went. Okay, hold on. I think I exited out of it. Sorry about that. So you click the sticky. You write and, well, no, you write the answer. Right. Then you save it and then it pops up there and then you cancel to go away yep. and then you can put that anywhere. See? Yep. True. So these blank ones, I'm going to go in and delete. Is that okay? Yep. Yep. So on adult ed side, tuition. Yes, that is correct. You can have tuition on state dollars only, but you cannot pay for tuition on the CTE side, right? Correct. Okay. The lending library could be adult ed, but I'm going to move it over to the middle because it could be adult ed or CTE. Yep. Okay, books, if they're, if they're part of a lending library, then it could be, but straight bookstore purchases would not be allowable CTE funds. Right. Okay, um, gloves, I don't know how I just did that. I don't think it was me. Is. <laughs> So gloves and equipment are both or one? Well, equipment has to be you know, CTE specific is fine. Um, I would think gloves could be a football. Right. If they'd be in the lending library. Well, it depends. Are we talking latex gloves or are we talking like love oh. gloves? But I believe gloves, like if they're latex, like for CNA or something, would be a supply. You would just, you know, add them to your supply list every uh -huh. on your budget every year. I don't know. Ah, they added welding to their gloves. So that uh, goes yeah. to the that could go to the middle for the lending library. Good. Okay. Um, and I don't believe that gloves are an allowable supply on the adult ed side. Like you were talking about yeah, latex I, gloves. I don't yeah. think it is. And I'm not. A, I don't know if I've ever actually seen latex gloves on a supply budget supply <laughs> list. So I am not a hundred percent. Are so, you talking about welding gloves? Welding gloves would be fine in the lending library. Yes, I could be part of my. Okay, I wasn't clear. Okay. Well, um, yeah, that's fine. Yep. Um, spots, no one's put that. Sorry. Okay. All but tuition. Okay. So this one says Mr. Smith's conference attendance for professional development. Except Mr. Smith is the adult ed instructor. It has to be. Uh, so can you pay for this adult ed instructor to go to the welding conference on the CTE um, side? We can pay for the CTE professional development. The I think you would need to put that, that adult on the adult ed side. And I think it would be allowable because it is professional development for the work he's doing in ICAPS. Now, the other thing I want to say with that is be cautious getting your support teachers super certified in the area that they are helping with mm -hmm. because we have seen that backfire on programs that the, the adult ed support teacher is super certified and almost or has taken over CTE instructor role becomes a problem. Very similar credentials. Too. Yes, very similar credentials. Yes. So okay. just, I think that would be a lot 
helpful on the professional development side, but be careful sending him to a welding helpful. conference because you may run into other issues. But um, we're looking at the pink one. It says gas cars, professional development, conference, supplies, textbooks. That's all out on CTE. Yep. Gas cars, CTE, gas cars, CTE, all between. So these are all good. We're all making sense here. So it's, it's good. All right. That's good. Let's go. We have one more scenario. Okay. And now we're all pros of putting post it notes on here. So if we can do this this time. All right. Jack is an 18 year old student who recently aged out of the foster home. Graduated high school. So it's not a part time job at the Bell Body Shop. He does not make a complaint to rent an apartment and regularly moves from one sports apartment to another. He's interested in the welding program at Everything Academy to further his career at the Bell Body Shop. How can adult ed and or Perkins be utilized to help Jack get his welding certificate? You can start putting post-it notes. Um, and change if you, I forget that you guys can't see me. The change of scenarios is at the top. Yep. So the changes, can you hear me? The change of scenarios is up here at the top. So you move from one where we were before to two. And then now you do the same thing with the sticky click. And then you get to fill out your sticky. Got it. Here we go. Oh, nope. Oh my God. I lost one of the data there. I know. Okay, so he's an 18 year old. He graduated from high school and he aged out of the foster care system. So is that adult CTE? I'm asking like you only going to answer me. You're not CTE. <laughs> Um, he's interested in the welding program to bring his crew to the shop. How can adult funds be utilized to help get his welding certificate? So, I'm going to add support and I'm going to add that over here to the adult itself. Um, so maybe he's going into what? Automotive? Welding. So, um, welding shield probably is going to be more of a CTE mm -hmm. or a, no, that'd be the lending library. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. He library is a member of a special population, right? He's the youth who's aged out of foster care and homeless and homeless. Yes, Essentially. technically, he may not realize right he may not identify as homeless because he's living in somebody's apartment but mm -hmm. yeah yep transportation good because housing support ct um well linking him up with services but yeah for special populations there are um we can't do cash we can't do gift cards we can't do we can't do tuition and fees we can't, I don't think we can pay housing, but we can refer him to. Okay. And honestly, adult ed could do that same sort of referral, which is one of the benefits of an ICAPS is you've got two sets of people that can make referrals. So Ann being somebody on the CTE side, her contact for housing is Scott, but my contact for housing on the adult ed side is Steve. So I can call Steve, she can call Scott, and hopefully we can find a way to get mm -hmm. Jack some some sort of help or support or something. Um, equipment uniform, equipment right. lending, transportation. Yes. So you guys have this. You guys, you guys are doing really well with this. It's just one of those things that sometimes we need your minded. There's a lot on the other side. Um, so if you guys are at the cohort combos next week or you are having a planning meeting and you're trying to figure out how are we going to pay for this, it makes sense to have a conversation about, well, what's allowable on your side? Well, mm -hmm. CTE can cover these things, but CTE also needs to ask, what's allowable on the adult ed side? Right. You know, the CTE instructor is only going to be paid salary limits, benefits, whatever, from C.C. Perkins money. The adult ed instructor is only going to be paid salary benefits whatever out of the adult ed funds so those those types of things are clearly drawn separated it's the students 
that tend to kind of gray it a little bit and go, wait, where do I go for which? But if you can work with each other and you know Perkins knows, hey, we always seem to be a little bit short on the lending library side, mm -hmm. we can do these things. That adult ed says, we don't have to pay for the welding shield. You've already got three of them. Let's just use what you've got. But we'll buy the gloves. Mm -hmm. So we, we can kick in the gloves, you kick in the welding, and your library grows, but it's not all on one person's back. So that's really the goal of this exercise is to see what goes where, what is on one side, what's not on the other side, and really there's a lot that is in the middle. Yeah, and I think for us, for a student like this, you have to think about what other learning supplies he may need. You know, is he going to need a laptop loan or a hotspot loan or, you know, something like that to, you know, right. to consider? Of which some sort which of, you can use your Perkins money. Some for. side of book bag, duffel bag, container-ish mm -hmm. thing to Correct. get to class and back with all of his stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, all of that is good. So good for you all. Very good. Nice job at quarter to four in the yeah. afternoon. <laughs> um, can we get out of this and go back to the slide deck? There you go. And go to the next slide. Oh, there's scenario one. Go to scenario two. Go ahead on the next slide. Okay, so the other piece of this afternoon that we want to talk about quickly is, I'll take that from since I'm the only one, um, is ability to benefit information. Some of you have heard a lot about this. Some of you have not heard much about this. Um, oh, Sarah, I will come back to your, okay, before I get into this, Sarah had a question. Could you clarify if he's graduated from high school, is he lacking basic skills or how does he qualify for adult ed? Excellent point. I saw that and it entered my head and then it left my head. Yes, he has, in order to get adult ed funding in that last scenario, he would have to qualify as skills deficient, which is below the ninth grade level of reading or math. Um, one. So, and Brittany added a note um, for special populations, if they're aging out of foster care in Illinois, people age out at 21. So just don't want to cause confusion here, but he was 18. So he's, he's not really aged out yet. He's still in foster care. So again, just noting that these things, there are, there are additional things we got to take a look at sometimes. Okay. Um, so ability to benefit is another option for braided funding. All we said is it's multiple ways to bring it together. Ability to benefit is one of those at a community college. Um, it is a financial aid initiative that provides a way for students without a high school diploma to possibly receive federal financial aid. It doesn't mean they're guaranteed to. It means they're eligible to apply for it, um, either through earning a high enough score on a U.S. Department of Education approved test, earning six credit hours, or utilizing the state divine process. Um, next slide, please. We have, have explored, we know that a lot of adult ed students and CTE students don't have um, strong test taking skills, so that test is not always a great option, and getting them to six credit hours can be expensive, and ICAPS fits right into this because many times ICAPS are five, six, eight, ten, twelve credit hours, so this could help them get to that if they needed to. So. In 21, a group in Illinois started writing the state defined process. It was approved in May of 2022 by the Department of Education, U.S. Department of Education. Um, since then, ICCB has been working on resources and professional development to help schools um, understand and possibly use the plan. So where are we now? We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But where we are is that we've got some video modules that have been developed and webinars that are planned. Next slide, please. Um, video, video modules, they're right on that link on that screen. Um, there are four modules. Um, they are slides. Need, so PowerPoint slides and the videos are both on the ICCB website together. Um, module one is a background on ability to benefit. Module two is the program design, kind of the meat potatoes of the state defined plan. Module three is data collection and reporting. What does that look like? What are those requirements? And number four, eligible career pathways. Now, we tried to do these 
I think the longest one is nine minutes. Most of them are six or seven minutes. Um, and we did that so you all could go in, find what you need, and not have to sit through an hour long presentation to know to find the one piece of information you're looking for. So we have these broken out. Um, and you are welcome to share these links. If you find one that you're like, ooh, that one's really good. I need to share that with my testing services. Ooh, that's really good. I need to share that with financial aid. Ooh, this is really good. We're a CTE person. We need to know more about this in adult ed. Share them. They are on the website. They are free to everybody. Go about using and sharing them as you see fit. Next slide, please. We have some upcoming webinars planned. Um, session one, we have, I will back up just a second. We have a listserv built for all of the colleges that opted into the state plan. On that listserv is one particular person from each institution that is serving as the primary contact. And so these webinar links have already been sent out to those individuals so they can share them out, but you can also request to be part of these and I can share links with you. I can get these to you. Um, session one is October 23rd from 1 to 30. It's ATB basics. Session two is documentation for success in ATB. That's November 8th from 1 to 2.30. There's brief descriptions on each of these. And session three, ATB and ITAF, is December 4th from 1 to 2.30 as well. Um, so the first one is a very broad overview. The second one is very much financial aid and adult aid working together on documentation and how does this work. And then the third session is very adult ed focused on how you can do that using um, ICAP to do that. So if you want to be part of these, reach out to me and I will get you the Zoom link. Um, Jody, I see that you're interested in the basics. Um, my email is gonna pop up in just a minute. Let me, so I'm gonna do that this way. I'm going to put my email in the chat, so if you are interested, feel free to send me an email today yet or whenever you get a chance, and I will gladly send you the information. Um, I'm just afraid that as soon as I start writing down names, I'm going to have a whole lot of names to write down, and I'm going to we're going to run away over. So, um, if you're interested, in that, let me know. I can get you writing. Um, next slide, please. It's coming, I'm sure. Um, something else that we're offering is an ability to benefit office hour. We're doing this one time in January from 1 to 2.30. See how it's going. If we need to build more of these in, we completely can. But right now, we want to get through the webinars. We want to give everybody a chance to see the modules, kind of get into this a little bit further, and then do an office hour to see what's missing. What do you need? What are you still looking for? Um, and on that day, you bring your questions, your challenges, and your victories. Again, if you're interested, shoot me an email, and I will gladly send you the Zoom link for those. Next slide. So one other piece I want to add with ability to benefit is we are also working on a user guide. Um, we had a draft of that at the forum. We are still making final edits on that, getting full approval, getting it on the website. But that is something that will also be shared out as a user guide. So programs, institutions, ATB teams can take a look at that and really see what do we need to be doing, how do we need to be doing it, what are some ideas. Okay, so braided funding. I'm going to turn this a little bit so I can come back in the corner. Um, so as we said before, braided funding can take many different forms. So today you've heard about funding and ability to benefit. Both of those are predominantly at community colleges. Um, many more options exist, and we love hearing how you're breaking. So feel free to reach out with any questions. Or successes. We like hearing about those. How are you making this work? Um, we heard successes this morning that employer panel with literacy Chicago. That's how we knew to reach out to them was because we they were creating funding that way with a person, and so we were like, "Ooh, we're going to contact them and see how that's going." So please let us know if you find some, some of Sarah's secret sauce and figure out how to make all these braided funding work together. I think that is the end. Can we try another slide if there's one? There are no additional slides.
Woohoo! We made it to the end. So it is 10 to 4. I'm going to turn this over to Amy and Sarah and let them finish this up. Okay. Thank you all so very much. I'm excited to um, just learn a lot today. And I really had some great and engaging sessions. So I'm very excited to be with all of you. And just want to, again, encourage you to come to the cohort combos next week. If you are starting an ICAP program, or if you're in the middle of an ICAP program, or if you just have questions, you can come by yourself. You can come as a team. We would really like to help you. Um, last thing is we are going to, Aaron's right on cue. We are going to have an evaluation. So we are all about continuous improvement. We work with ICCB year round on this professional development. And we really want to hear from you how you thought today went, how we can improve it, what went well, what are some areas for improvement. So please take a minute and fill out that survey and let us know how we can change and improve the Transitions Academy Fall Convening. And thank you all so very much. Thank you, ICCB, for allowing us to support this fantastic program. And thank you to all the participants for your engagement today. It's been absolutely fantastic. Hope you all have a great, safe trip home and um, look forward to seeing many of you next week. <laughs>